person. So uh, what, is, what is this talk about? Just a short introduction or a short thing. So uh, I will start with a really short introduction about BCH because it uh, is necessary to establish the context, what we are doing and why uh, the service we are doing uh, is used and how it is used for the RSEC. Uh, the technology and the history for the key ceremonies and the signer, uh, what were the, the, like the motivations to make changes, uh, why we choose not uh, uh, because of the uh, offline KSK functionality, and uh, also how we are improving the reliability with verification of the sign zones. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I will just quickly go through these slides so I if someone wants uh, later can look at the slides, but there are like four areas which I want to like highlight, and like uh, which is DNS, working within uh, helping internet exchange points, regulation and policy, and cybersecurity coordination. Okay, one thing here is that uh, we started uh, DNS sex signing uh, as a service uh, uh, in 2011. These are the location where PCH is present. Uh, okay, and for DNSSEC, this is the uh, interesting part uh, because uh, we have physical signing uh, facilities. Uh, three locations currently. There is four, uh, a fourth location which is planned: uh, San Jose, Zurich, uh, uh, Singapore, and the fourth is Montevideo. Uh, this is bump in the wire signing. This is intended to encourage the use of DNSSEC. Uh, we are signing 174 zones, uh, mostly CCTLDs uh, or, or the subdomains or second level domains of CCTLDs. Uh, we have two signing facilities where the, where the ZSKs are being loaded uh, in Zurich and, and San Jose. Uh, there are two others which we call it offline which is basically uh, these systems uh, uh, are only used to generate ZSKs uh, and are SIGs, and they are kept offline all the time, basically air grabbed, so never connected to like any real network. Uh, similar to how the ICANN uh, uh, root zone signing process is. Yeah, someone, if someone interested, we, we, we can take a look at this at the slides. Uh, this is the room, one of the rooms uh, in Zurich. Uh, this is uh, uh, safe inside, and uh, uh, the HSM uh, uh, with the loaded keys are in, is inside this, this safe. Yeah, right. Uh, so this uh, uh, HSM signer, uh, one HSM signer uh, is with the loaded ZSKs, and there's another one uh, which is just used. Uh, and the, 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 the KSKs are only stored inside this uh, device, or when it is maybe not on, on the device itself, only, in, uh, only exported in RAV format, which basically means it can be uh, uh, loaded to these machines. I mean the same machine again, or the one which is like part of this family. Uh, yeah. Left and right, nothing really to say here. Uh, key ceremonies. Uh, we do key ceremonies like once or twice a year, uh, either in San Jose or Singapore. Similar again to the ICANN processes, there is like roles uh, separation. There are like witnesses, notary, and other specified roles. And uh, as mentioned, the, Z the, the key SKs are held offline and uh, never connected to the network. <coughs> Uh, the ZSKs and the associated RR SIGs are generated two years in advance. Okay. The input to the key ceremonies is which zones we are signing uh, and the timing parameters which, which can be tuned, like how long, for example, a ZSK is valid, the, the period uh, for what the RR SIGs are being generated for. And if there is like some kind of uh, rollover being preparated, then other DNS keys, like KSKs and ZSKs, as necessary. Uh, the output from the key ceremonies 
is ZSK uh, in wrap format, which can be imported to the other HSM. Uh, those HSMs uh, uh, which are connected to a signer software. Uh, these are transferred with an offline mechanism, so basically a USB stick. And uh, the KSK files are only for backup purposes. They are not like to be loaded to another system. Uh, the unencrypted part, which is coming out of these uh, processes, is the DNS key records, uh, basically the public part with, for, with the uh, KSK and ZSKs as, as appropriate. So basically everything is uh, set in stone or, or uh, determined during the key ceremony. Uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, yeah. Uh, this will be important later. Yeah. So the first generation of Signer, this was built uh, uh, by Reclam, Bobber, Smith, and Robert uh, in 2010. Basically, these were like very low level tooling, meaning that PKCS 11 backup was used for PK, uh, PKCS and HSM interactions and low-level bind nine tools were being used. DNSSEC sign zone, DNSSEC key from label, basically. The building blocks basically is there is a daemon, like some C, uh, uh, some program written in C. This is receiving notifies and then uh, uh, invokes the, the steps below, which are the signing steps. So basically there is a part which fetches the zone uh, with dig. There is a Z sign script which works with the key bundles, basically concatenates the zones uh, with the DNS key RR set and the RR uh, and this enables uh, DNSX sign zone to basically do the signing uh, with the ZSK because the KSK signature for the DNS key RR set that is done in advance during the key ceremonies basically. Uh, we didn't have uh, any like general issues or, or failures, uh, but uh, in a mission critical environment, no one really wanted to deal with the low-level operations uh, and uh, development of these tools anymore. This is something which uh, there are commonly available tools uh, and softwares available that are used by others, known to work, and uh, actively maintained. So this is where we wanted uh, basically to go. There were also like newer features, like newer record types, et cetera, et cetera, being available, uh, which the older system didn't support, which was less important, of course, for like CCTLDs, but uh, still this is the right direction. Uh, there were uh, newer best practices uh, 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 since uh, 2010, uh, CASP, the key and signing policy is one of them. Uh, CDS records, Zone MD. There are NSX3 recommendations which uh, the current environment uh, doesn't implement. Um, we also wanted uh, incremental signing capability because the old system didn't have a capability to like reuse uh, uh, all the generated signatures. Uh, all the signing happened uh, from a fresh start every time when a zone was signed. Uh, so we choose uh, not uh, uh, as a signer because it implements uh, CASP, the key and signing policy, to schedule the key usage and rotation uh, instead of like using various configuration files. Uh, there is also tools uh, 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 in NOT which can query and change uh, uh, these settings and there are more safety features built in. Uh, and uh, after some format tweaks, the, the, the offline KSK support in uh, NOT can use the output uh, which uh, is from our key ceremonies. Okay, thanks. Uh, basically, this is how NOT uh, envisioned and implements uh, uh, the offline KSK functionality. There are two environments, uh, one with KSKs and another one with ZSKs. The KSK is needed only to generate the RR6 uh, for the DNS key RR sets. And the workflow is in a way that each side generates uh, its own keys. 
and uh, the ZSK side submits the public part, of course, uh, to the uh, KSK side, which gives back a signature for its own KSK. And so basically everything goes into the RR set and we get an, we get, it gives an RR sig back or multiples, of course, if it's like for a longer period, the signature is. Okay, our uh, key ceremony processes almost produces what the ZSK side expects. So what we needed to do is mostly add up the key bundles which are basically DNS key RR SIGs uh, into a format which, uh, uh, which not uh, uh, accepts. Uh, the files which are displayed earlier that also has like timing information in and uh, we use that uh, for CASP to set the timings uh, again. This is how key signing request looks like. Uh, basically, the ZSK is being visible. And then this is how the response is coming back with uh, both the ZSKs uh, uh, and the KSK and the SSO is associated RR6 signature with the validity period. And uh, this is just a reminder like how the two compares. Uh, Not uh, has uh, uh, practical and up-to-date HTML-based documentation, so this is the reason why we chose that. There are also complete MEM pages available, and uh, it's nice and easy to uh, 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 work together with the developers. So, uh, by nine, seems uh, that it is also gaining such functionality. As I understand, there is a cooperation or some discussion going on between the NOT uh, and the ISC developers, the Vine9 developers. And uh, uh, it seems that even the format which is used uh, by, the, by these processes, the offline key signing request and response, Uh, would be or will be compatible between the two implementations. This is good because we also want to maintain uh, software diversity, so not just rely on like one vendor uh, uh, for our purposes. And other enhancements. Uh, NSD recently, which means like one or two years ago, uh, gained a functionality. So when it loads the zone, it can uh, uh, run a verification script before uh, allowing the new zone to be AXFR'd out and sending notifications. Uh, if the notification fails, the old version is being kept and served, which can be used uh, for DNSSEC uh, uh, verified checks. And this is what we did. So we validated the DNSSEC uh, Uh, support chain, uh, sorry, we validate the DNSSEC trust chain from the parent. This is a script uh, implemented in Net, uh, NetDNS. Uh, this is to bo uh, guard against both operational errors and software bugs. If the DS record is present, it checks the DNS key RR set and it checks against uh, uh, the key defined or available in the DS, if there is such. If there is none, there is nothing to check. We can just go ahead. However, if someone, uh, if there is like a software issue or maybe an operational issue, someone run, uh, runs the wrong command, then this can stop the bad zone from propagating. This is how sample output looked like from the program itself. I mean NSD and the script which is being used here. Uh, yep. Another thing, uh, uh, another enhancement, and this is related to another uh, uh, seen recent accident, uh, is that uh, it is useful to check the RRC ex expires or expiry. Uh, in this case, the good approach is not to stop the propagation of the zone because that won't help in this case. However, to, oper uh, to notify us or alert us uh, that something is going on, We can uh, set the uh, resign parameters in a way that it gives us still like a few days if for some reason, which is something which according to a, a configuration and 
and software bug uh, happened in similar systems uh, elsewhere. So this is an approach to try to detect this condition or guard against sim similar cases. Yep. Uh, the key per HSMs, which, we are, uh, which are currently being used, uh, will be going out of support uh, soon. So we are evaluating what other uh, FIPS uh, uh, certified uh, uh, hardware signing models are available. And uh, we are also looking, also like your, your comments or anything, uh, or other discussions, what, can, what more can be done to verify the zone in advance. One idea was to maybe check if the number of records change drastically in a zone. This, of course, would be in accordance or in discussions with the, the, with the uh, CCTLDs. So if they want such a feature, then uh, we will try to help them. Uh, yeah, I think basically that's it. Maybe I was a little bit faster than I expected, but I'm happy to answer your questions and everything, so. Hello, Stefan Ebink, SRDN. Um, I was wondering um, how much time does it cost to uh, add a new uh, zone to uh, your operations because of all the people that are needed? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that is a fair question. Uh, uh, so we have both uh, uh, a soft signer capability. So if someone like wants to quickly uh, go and uh, help with the signing, then we can do soft signing and then later migrate to the HSM signer. So this is the approach what we use. So the other side do not necessarily have to wait uh, for us to do the key signing ceremony, basically. Thank you. And you were asking what would be possible to add to the checking, et cetera. Uh, changes in number of records is a good uh, solution. And also parsing the whole zone, but that costs time. So you might want to see uh, if that can be done in parallel with other checkings you want to do. Just a heads up. I'm glad to discuss any more issues uh, or things that can be uh, added uh, later on. In. So currently, uh, the RRSIG check is basically parsing the whole zone. Uh, and uh, yeah, <coughs> we will also gain uh, uh, confidence and, uh, and uh, 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 so if we have experiences and more to share on that one, we will do. Uh, this is like still in like early stage, so not uh, too many zones are being deployed on this system. Yet. Good luck with that. Thank you. Uh, hi, this is Pallavi from Salesforce. Um, I had a question about one of your slides, maybe slide 32 or 30. Yeah. Um, so some of the checks that you have said, uh, you mentioned that you generate the ZSKs and the signatures for a period of time. Do you also do ZSK rollovers? Yes, yes we do. Yeah. So I, I think in that case, some of the checks sh like you know, that you have should be around ZSK, pre-publish, post-publish, uh, active, ZSK signing and that uh, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for that, actually we have an audit script which we can run after the key signing ceremony because we have all the keys previously there. So we can do our checks. It doesn't necessarily need to happen like on the fly when the new zone is there, but um, the more checks the better. So we will Got take it. that in. Yeah, uh, I, I think the pre-check might help with your pre-publish, post-publish but whether the active key is signing at the correct time and between the two keys would also be a good check to have. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.